what are some ways that people maybe wrongly approach scripture um, and maybe some ways that we can't approach scripture? Just speak to what hermeneutics is and um, some thoughts on that subject. Yeah, so my understanding of hermeneutics would be that, it, you know, it's essentially like the science and the art of how we are to read scripture. So uh, it's a science in that there are rules that you mm. need to be mindful of and, and you yeah. need to be following. But it's an art in that, you know, as you uh, dip in between different literary genres, there's going to be in some cases some fluidity of that. So you can't always just have like a specific, like rigid set of rules that applies to every single book in the Bible, because the fact is there's different literary genres. So there's going to be a little bit of an ebb and flow anyway. Yeah. Um, for me, uh, you were speaking specifically to like maybe some of the things that we want to avoid. Um, yeah. I would say that we need to, before we even uh, come to the Bible, a really healthy thing for everybody to do is to kind of step outside of themselves and do some reflecting and try to become aware of the different uh, influences on our worldviews and our ways of thinking and our ways of approaching the Bible. And even if we can get to a place where we're just aware of it right off the bat, that's going to help us uh, just have a way easier time as we're, as we're reading. Um, there's probably four or five different specific examples I would give that I would caution people against. And I actually was just, I, I did a little thing on my Instagram story the other day about it, but the five uh, forms I'll say of pre-understanding or the things, the factors that are influencing our perspective on scripture that we need to be aware of are first and foremost, I'd say theological agendas. Um, so, so you have, you know, this theological camp or that theological camp. And, uh, the problem is, is that so many times we kind of have our allegiance first and foremost to a, to a theological framework or a theological camp. And when we go to scripture, we're, we're allowing that, that mindset and that perspective to actually force us to really emphasize certain things and kind of forget about other things. And I just say, we can't fit God into a box. And so I've tried right. to get to a point where I'm just okay with God not fitting into my neat theological boxes. When I go through the Old Testament, there's a lot of things that you see sometimes about God that, dang, like that doesn't fit into my theological box. And you kind of just have to like let God not be in a box. And so I'd say mm. theolo theological agendas are one thing that you need to be aware of. Um, Political agendas, I think, are, are something that we need to be aware of. You know, uh, there's a lot of people that whether they're on the right or the left, you your allegiance is first and foremost to your political ideology before it is to understanding scripture. And we begin to cherry pick and we begin to say things like, you yeah. know, I'm not even going to get into that because that's well, not what no, we're talking about. No, this is so good, though. It's true. And I think it's good for people to say. It. And I, yeah, I think I don't I, you know, we don't need to maybe go into the specifics. But man, I have seen. On, and honestly, on, on all sides, okay, I mm -hmm. have seen people on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, post scriptures about a policy. And I'm like, that verse has nothing to do with what you're saying. Right. And not that, and, 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 our, and I do believe our Christianity should shape our policy, our, our, you know, our politics in a sense, but I agree. I'm with I agree. you. I'm with you on that. And it's highlighted right now for sure. Totally. So, so politics are something that you need to be aware yeah. of. Uh, a third thing that I'd say you should be aware of is your family of origin, man. Like, like depending on what family you grow up in and what the culture and the context of your family life was, that's going to influence your worldview. And so, for example, um, uh, you know, let's just look at your socioeconomic situation. Like if you grew up in like a really poor family versus a really rich family, I'm not saying that one one family automatically has a right interpretation than the other, but you just need to be aware that as you read, for example, some of the passages about the poor or whatever, I guarantee you your your family of origin and, and kind of your socioeconomic situation, maybe the principles that you were taught growing up, it might have a factor in how you approach that text, whether you're into it or not. And you know what I mean? So yeah. family of origin is a big thing. Um, uh, 
culture just in general is a massive thing just just kind of cultural worldviews cultural norms cultural ideas things that it's like the water that we swim in you know what is our culture there's there's too much to unpack there but mm. um that's that's a no-brainer and then last but not least i just say familiarity in general so if we've been following jesus for a long time and maybe we've read uh, this passage multiple times if we allow familiarity can can even be something that we need to be aware of because because just because you're familiar with a passage doesn't mean that you 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 know uh have like the corner of truth and understanding it like they're the God, word of god is deep so those are kind of the five things that i would encourage people to be aware of when it comes to how they're approaching scripture be aware of theological agendas political agendas uh be aware of your family of origin be aware of cultural influences and be aware of familiarity.